What's up, people of the plant world? It's Ricky Tree here, and I'm hanging out with papaya, or Karika papaya. This is an amazing um, tropical, subtropical tree. It's native to the uh, to Central and South America, but at this point, it's cultivated all over the world. Um, most people have probably eaten the papaya fruit when it's ripe. Um, it's a really, really popular food. Find it in almost every supermarket. Um, but there's a lot more to this tree than just the fruit. Um, most of the plant parts are, are, are actually useful. Um, and uh, it's a really good example of medicine, food and medicine coming out of uh, one plant. So um, just to talk a little bit about first its, uh, its growth patterns. I mentioned that it is a subtropical and, and tropical fruit. Uh, we're here in South Florida uh, and it grows really quite well here. Although I've noticed that um, here, like this far up north in South Florida and well this far north in its growing region we're kind of north for papaya here in South Florida in Central and South America um, is really where, where, it's, uh, where it prefers to grow. Um, so, so down here I noticed that the plants last like two or three years, three years if you have like a really healthy plant um, and then they start, they, they, they start kind of fading away um, succumbing to different types of diseases. Um, but this here is a, is a, young, is a young tree and it was actually planted here by a bird. Um, I did not plant this tree or the one next to it or any of the papayas that I have right now um, growing, growing around here. Um, yeah, so I haven't planted any of the papayas that I have growing around here, but when, they, when I see them start coming up, um, I just leave them because who's gonna chop down a papaya tree, um, especially when it's gonna give you food and medicine. Um, so papaya, the one main thing about papayas is as much as they like growing in tropical regions, they don't like wet feet. Um, so if you plant them in a flood, in a, in a flood prone area, you're gonna wanna be real careful. It's gonna wilt down a lot, especially if it gets flooded. Um, but it does like regular water. It doesn't like to dry out. So it's kind of like this happy balance with, uh, with, with water. Um, you, you also get like, here in South Florida, we have really sandy soil. So if you, um, if, if it's growing in a, in a sandy area and it's not well fertilized or it doesn't have like a lot of good compost around um, the base of the plant, you're gonna get fruits that aren't as sweet as plants that, um, that are growing in like a, a nice composted heap or, um, or plants that, that you're not regularly uh, feeding. So that's kind of an important thing when it comes to the flavor um, of your ripe papaya. Um, and you have a variety of different um, a variety of different papaya varieties um, which come of course with different types of flavors some are more floral some are more musky um, some people really don't like that like musky aftertaste of papaya um, but don't rule papaya out just because of that there's a lot of different varieties um, and uh, and so and and so yes it's really cool actually some have like a more uh, red flesh some are a little bit more orange some even have yellow flesh um, so, so yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Some are more round like these, and then, um, and then some will grow like a longer, uh, a big long fruit like that. Um, in South America, they call the long ones lechosa. Uh, and actually, one of the reasons why they call it lechosa, lech, lechosa, is kind of a play off of the word leche, um, which means milk in Spanish. And the reason why they call it that is because it get you see this sap kind of coming out of the of the fruit here um, that's this latexy kind of sap stuff that they um, that uh, that gives it its name lechosa um, but it's uh, it's a latexy sap that's really rich in paparine which is an enzyme that is really good at digesting and metabolizing um, proteins so actually a lot of people will use the peel of green papaya to tenderize protein rich foods mainly um, of course tenderizing your meats so you could well let's go there you could peel the papaya and then use a chunk of the outer uh, of the outer skin and stick it in the water that you're using to tenderize or season uh, your meat and it'll help to get it to, to make it a little bit softer and if you're vegan or vegetarian you can do that uh, stick it in 
um, with your protein rich um, veggies, beans, legumes or whatever and it'll make it a little bit easier to, di to, di to digest. Um, now it's a, it's the, the green papaya peel is really really rich in this stuff um, which is one of the big reasons really why you want to peel it because it could be a little bit too much for the digestive system um, but once the papaya ripens it has just enough um, that it doesn't make it hard to digest and it actually assists in the digestive process which is really a, a, a really cool uh, a really cool remedy just a, a, a fresh ripe papaya um, is a really cool remedy for um, well I've used it for when me or my friends and family or clients um, have um, like stomach upset or mainly like heartburn and stuff like that it um, the ripe papaya flesh um, will help to cool that down and, 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 and remedy the, uh, the discomfort that comes with that um, but papaya is not only edible ripe right papaya is actually also really cool um, and delicious when you eat it green so like I mentioned you would peel the the, 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 the green papaya and then the inside um, you can chop it or grate it I really like it when it's grated um, kind of make like a uh, get get a, a like a potato peeler and make kind of like spaghetti slices with the papaya with the green papaya and um, and saute it down, stir fry it in with, with your seasonings. And it's this really cool like crisp starch that takes in seasonings and flavors really well and adds a little bit of substance to, um, to your meal. So it's, it's really cool, really uh, a really healthy um, way to have papaya because it has a lot less sugars. The, 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 the starches haven't turned into sugars when it's ripe when it's sorry the starches haven't turned into sugars when it's green yet so it's not going to be as sweet um, as the ripe papaya it's more like a vegetable in that way um, and I've heard uh, I've heard some people say that it has um, some more of like blood purifying um, properties when it's green than the digestive properties uh, the digestive aiding properties that the ripe flesh has um, so that's the fruit right um, which is a, a really amazing a, a really amazing remedy for um, as I mentioned the digestive system and a little bit for the blood when it's green um, the slices of the uh, of the peel can be used to tenderize meat because of that paparine enzyme that it has um, but the leaves are also very useful as well um, you, you can uh, uh, I've seen it a, a very often recommended to be used as a, a tea, as a vermifuge, or if you're trying to get rid of parasites in your system. Um, however, I personally, when I was studying with the folks down in Central America, um, Guat in Guatemala in particular, um, they wouldn't, they, they, they actually wouldn't use the leaves as tea um, or in a, a, in a tisane or herbal infusion. Um, they would actually juice the, uh, juice the leaves. So the way they were doing it down there is grabbing a leaf and mashing it down and then straining it with a cheesecloth um, I suppose you know up here we could definitely just run it through a masticating juicer get the juice and it would be effective that way you could also make a succus tincture um, so you could juice the leaf and then add a little bit of alcohol to stabilize it and then now you have a remedy that's stable and you can hold on to it for whenever it is that you need to use um, a vermifuge or you're trying to do a, a, a parasite protocol um, so that's really cool. And another really um, uh, another part of the plant that can be used for kind of a similar reason for that vermifuge um, parasite remedy is the seeds of the ripe fruit. If you get the seeds of the ripe fruit, um, they have this like more more of a warming um, peppery flavor to it, and they um, they are used very often in tincture or just chewed on uh, raw as um, as a uh, as a vermifuge remedy. Um, some people even will dry out the seeds and put them in a pepper shaker and you know grind it onto their meals because it does have this peppery um, this peppery taste to it. So it's kind of like a black pepper substitute um, though it's not quite as spicy as black pepper. Um, so so yeah there's that. You, you also do want to be really careful with both the leaf and um, and the seed and the, the, the peel of, of the green papaya, 
as they are um, as they are abortive fascians. So if you are a, uh, if you are a pregnant mama or you want to get pregnant, um, you want to be real careful by uh, re really careful of using the seeds, um, like eating the seeds of the fresh fruit of, of a ripe papaya, or um, or using the leaves in any kind of protocol. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, another really interesting use that I've seen for the um, for the seeds of the papaya is uh, is is a contraceptive for men. It actually disfigures um, sperm cells so that they can't penetrate the egg as effectively, and so you know reduces sperm count, less likely to um, to, to get pregnant. So if you uh, if you are a man and you're and you're using um, the, the the papaya seeds in that way, um, you know. You want to either be careful with it or use it intentionally for that reason. I've, I, I, I only know through um, one of my one of my buddies. He did an experiment on himself, where he did a sperm count, and then um, and then started supplementing every day. He would take uh, a, a teaspoon of papaya of, of papaya seeds, and um, after it was about three months or so, he did another sperm test. And he found that his the his viable sperm had decreased by 90%. Um, it was a it, it was very interesting. And then he stopped taking um, the papaya seeds, and it took him about another three or four months for his sperm count to come back to normal. So sperm count does normalize after that. Um, and I just thought it was a really interesting experiment. Um, and for his privacy, I won't say his name, although he probably wouldn't mind me saying it. But needless to say, I didn't talk to him about it, so I'm not gonna. I'm not going to put them out there like that. Um, so, um, so yeah. What else about papaya? Um, I grew up around these trees my, pretty much my whole life, and I've been growing them down here in South Florida for a while. Um, and it's really super cool. What you're looking at here, the, the plant that's fruiting, um, is uh, is actually the female. Um, the males will occasionally turn hermaphrodite and produce fruit although the fruit will be considerably smaller than what you're looking at here and you'll see if you look at the like the the flower up there you see how it's like one big flower that's how you can tell the female from the male the male which is right here right next to us here bring the phone a little closer so I can so maybe they can hear me. Um, so you'll notice that the male has a, 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 a long inflorescence with a lot of little flowers on it, and the, this this plant doesn't have any fruit. If the male doesn't have uh, females nearby, um, I've, that, what I've what I've seen and heard is that they will uh, start to produce some fruit. Um, but like I mentioned, they're not they're actually not even very palpable. Um, they become they're pretty small. Um, so basically you need a, a male somewhere in the vicinity. I really don't know what the radius is, um, but I, I would say, I'm not gonna make it up. Somewhere in the vicinity, you want, um, you want one male per 10 female plants. In this case, we got really lucky and a male sprouted up right next to a female. Um, so, you know, this, this female is getting plenty of pollen to produce as much fruit. So probably all of the flowers that it produces are gonna make fruit, which is gonna be really cool. Um, so yeah, I, uh, really don't know much else to, what, what, what else to say about papaya. I mean, we can go into a little bit more of the esoteric stuff. Um, so the papaya plant is, um, is ruled by the moon, um, and the element is water, and it's very likely because of the, uh, the abundance of this liquid latex that it produces and the moistening property, um, the moistening properties of the of the ripe fruit. Although there is some warming tendencies to the papaya plant in its in its uh, in the other plant parts that you can use, like the seed and the leaf. So anyway, um, that's about all I've got for papaya today. I mean, I'm sure there's so much more, and and uh, um, but but you know, this is. Um, this is really just an amazing, amazing fruit. And just remember, you know, you could, you could also um, use the plant in its, uh, in its green state. So wh when it's unripe, you can make a, what, what's really popular, you may have maybe even seen it uh, at like a Thai restaurant or something like that is, is the, the green papaya salad. 
Um, so, so definitely try that out if you're you know in an area that has Thai restaurants or if you're growing papaya at home don't just wait for uh, ju just just don't wait for it to oh I got I got something in my eye um, don't just wait for it to ripen you can also use the green fruits and it's actually really nice sometimes um, to thin the papaya the, 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 the bunches of fruit so if you have like a ton of fruit on the papaya and they're like a lot of times some papaya trees will grow fruits like right on top of each other so you thin the fruits out to give this fruits a little bit more space and give the plant a little bit more energy to create a bigger fruit and um, and then you can just use those green um, those those green uh, papayas as food and I've also seen like papaya green papaya as as a supplement and that's because of that paparine that we talked about earlier that has um, that digestive aid property um, so, so yeah, I mean, you can obviously fresh green papaya is much better than like what you would get in a capsule or a supplement. Uh, but if that's what you have access to, then that's what you use. Um, unless you, you know, know some other plants in your area that would have um, some similar effects there. Um, what else? So papaya is a fast grower. Uh, this kind of goes in the beginning, but I didn't want to leave it out of, uh, of this little conversation here. Um, this papaya sprouted out probably six six to eight months ago and it started producing fruit like last month um so it's a, it, you see how big it gets in just a, in just several months here and it starts producing fruit pretty quickly so within um so within about a year you'll get um you, you'll definitely be harvesting fruit from your plant uh, and it's a it's a really good um, plant for for the for the food forest system. If you want to start getting some biomass in your garden really quickly, papaya is a really good one to plant um, because it's going to give you food, it's going to give you medicine, it's going to provide shade, um, and uh, and and start producing biomass in your in your garden to to you know create habitat for birds and and other such things like that. Oh, speaking of. It's super important to note that the flower, the papaya, is a whole. Oh, I don't know the name of the moth. Some type of sphinx moth or hummingbird moth. One of the moths. But the caterpillar is the infamous tomato uh, tomato hornworm or the tobacco hornworm. So um, it'll be both of them. Um, but the papaya is a host for those the moths that lay tomato hornworm caterpillar eggs on your tomatoes. So don't plant your tomatoes near your papayas. Learn that lesson the hard way. Um, and uh, and yeah, so you could do that or use it as a trap crop or whatever it is, your, your techniques, however your technique manifests. Um, but I just wouldn't plant papayas near, um, near my tomato plants anymore because I did that a couple seasons ago and it was not a pretty sight for my tomatoes. So anyway, um, thank you all for joining me. And on this talk with papaya, um, my name is Ricky Tree from Botanica Organica. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Botanica underscore Organica if you want to see some more of what we're up to at Botanica Organica. And I'm doing this video um, for my friends and family over at the Florida School of Holistic Living who I've learned just an incredible amount from. I love them so much and it's an honor um, to, uh, to, to share about the plants with them. Um, so, so yeah, keep following them and, and, um, and learning, learn about plants. So thank you all very much for joining me and thank you, Mr. Dev for holding the camera and, um, I'll catch you all on, uh, on, uh, on another video. Thank you.